to um, the public hearing portion of today's meeting. So it's agenda item number 26. <clears throat> hearing before the Boston Redevelopment Authority, doing business as the Boston Planning and Development Agency, being held in conformance with Article 80 of the Boston Zoning Code to consider the proposed plan development area, master plan number 128 for 776 Sumner Street in South Boston. The, P the PDA master plan contemplates the construction of multiple buildings and the rehabilitation of existing buildings that compromise the proposed master plan area. This hearing was duly advertised on December 31st, 2020 in the Boston Herald. <clears throat> this is a BPDA hearing on a proposed petition by the agency. Staff members will first present their case and are subject to questioning by members of the agency. Thereafter, anyone who wishes to testify about the proposed project will be afforded an opportunity to do so. We are taking support and opposition at the same time. If you are planning to testify, please take time now to verify that your computer microphone is active. Click on the hand icon on your Zoom control panel, and this will signal, the st signal to staff that you would like to speak. When your hand is raised, it will be blue. If you are calling into the meeting and would like to testify, please dial star nine to raise your hand. When I call for all testimony, staff will announce your name and allow you to talk. You must then unmute your microphone and your webcam will not be active. In an effort to accommodate all who would like to speak about this proposal, each person will be given up to two minutes to comment. BPDA staff will indicate when 30 seconds remain. At that time, please con conclude your remarks so that the hearing may continue and others may be heard. At the conclusion of all oral testimony, any email testimony will be read aloud. Finally, the proponents are allowed a period of five to 10 minutes for rebuttal if they so desire. Uh, Mr. Stephen Harvey will now begin the presentation. Uh, good evening and thank you, Madam Chair members of the board, Madam Secretary, and Director Golden. My name is Stephen Harvey, and I'm a project manager at the BPDA, and I want to thank you for your time today. The project I bring before you today is 776 Summer Street. The project site is located in South Boston, a neighborhood within Boston. The proposed PDA master plan calls for the clearing of a 15-acre industrial site that contains a series of buildings and legacy infrastructure related to the Boston Edison L Street power station which operated on the project site from 1898 until it was decommissioned in 2007. If approved, the PDA master plan would be the first step to the construction of a vibrant mixed use uh, transit oriented development that celebrates the industrial past of the power plant through the adaptive reuse of some of its most historically significant buildings. The mixed use redevelopment of the project site will bring new energy to the previously inaccessible site, which will contain approximately 1.73 million square feet gross of floor area with a vibrant pedestrian environment connected in character and spirit to the industrial history of the district, as well as inviting innovation and artful design through the development of much needed residential and commercial buildings. This project has gone through an extensive review process, beginning with HRP 77 uh, Summer Street LLC, the proponent, filing their project notification form for the proposed project on May 15, 2017. Since this filing on May 15, 2017, there has been many IAG and public meetings, at least seven IAG meetings and 11 public meetings, the most recent being virtual public meetings held on December 16th and January 6th. Both meetings were advertised in South Boston Today, the local paper. With all that said, I would like to pass it over to Chris Bush, Assistant Deputy Director for Climate Change and Environmental Planning, to run through the neighborhood planning initiatives that took place, and then the Hillco Redgate team to present the project proposal. After the presentation, the Hillco Redgate the team will answer any questions put forward by the board. Thank you again for your time. And I'd also like to say that um, Rep. Beal, um, Rep. David Bill, who represents the area, has sent in comments um, uh, about the project. And uh, that will be part of the testimony as well. Thank you. 
Thanks, Stephen. If we could start with the next slide. I think the slide following. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Chris Bush. I'm the Assistant Deputy Director for Climate Change and uh, Environmental Planning. Uh, I'd like to start by providing some planning context for the project. Uh, due to the prominence of the power plant property in South Boston and the opportunities for its redevelopment to enhance uh, the community, the BPDA uh, initiated a public engagement process in early 2017 to better understand the priorities and aspirations of the neighborhood in advance of the city's Article 80 uh, development re review process. Uh, as part of the engagement process, the BPDA working with the proponent uh, hosted an open house event, uh, several walking tours of the Edison Turbine Hall, which were very well attended uh, to familiarize the community with the, the site and its history. Um, and then we held two community workshops, uh, which were held um, which within which a redevelopment vision and redevelopment concepts were developed uh, based upon residents, stakeholders, comments and discussion. Uh, with concepts intended to assist in guiding uh, the development plan for the site and future character of the project. Um, through these workshops, uh, the redevelopment vision themes included uh, that of community and having new development engage the South Boston neighborhood with programming and civic culture and retail uses that attract broad populations and are multi-generational in nature. Uh, this theme of arts and industry with Edison Turbine Hall as the heart and soul of the site with its industrial and historic character serving as an aesthetic that relates to the look and feel of new development. Uh, also ensuring a mix of uses that will serve as a destination to attract a variety of communities and demographics uh, with active ground floor uses throughout uh, to draw people in and serve uh, community needs. Uh, with respect to waterfront and open space, um, having that accommodate a number of uses and designed along with streets and sidewalks to have a public rather than private character and providing an active and passive uh, recreational opportunities throughout. Uh, with design in public realm, um, that building, roadway, sidewalk, and other open spaces are designed to be legible and welcoming to the public. And connections and access uh, addressing long-standing concerns uh, with traffic congestion, parking needs, um, and new development, improving access to transit, mobility conditions, and multimodal infrastructure. Uh, these redevelopment concepts built into, um, or the, these vision themes rather, were built into redevelopment concepts to provide more uh, direction to the development team. Uh, next slide, please. And these graphics represent uh, what was developed through the workshops. Um, the overall concepts were themed around placemaking, preservation, and programming. Uh, the graphic to the left, uh, again, focusing on Turbine Hall uh, and representing some of the retail, civic, and flexible use opportunities that were envisioned. Also concepts to activate the waterfront and framing Summer Street uh, as an active retail corridor. Uh, also neighborhood character and open space uh, focusing again on Summer Street to create a sense of arrival, uh, creating a network of open space, uh, greening the site and having climate smart and sustainable design. And lastly, mobility and access, uh, focusing on knitting the development site and street network into the surrounding community, um, advancing alternative means of transportation uh, with bike and pedestrian connections, uh, transit improvements and providing adequate parking for the anticipated mix of uses. Um, so this process and document has been used as, as a guide as the project has proceeded through Article 80 and will also inform uh, project phases as they advance. Um, I'll hand it off to the Redgate Hilco team at this point. Chris, thanks very much. Greg Bialecki from Redgate Capital Partners. Um, Steve Harvey, I'm, uh, I'm wondering whether you could promote uh, my colleague Ben Spira to panelists, please. Joyce, um, would you be able to do that? He just got promoted. Great. <clears throat> 
Good evening, everyone. Thanks for, for, for doing, taking care of that, Steve and, and Joyce. Much appreciated. Congratulations on your promotion. <laughs> thank you very much. I'll, t I'll take anything I can get these days. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Secretary, Director Golden, members of the board, uh, thank you for your time tonight uh, to, to, to hear our presentation. My name is Ben Spira. I'm a partner with Hilco Redevelopment Partners. Uh, and on behalf of the L Street Station uh, development team, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. I um, also want to express our sincere gratitude to the South Boston community um, and to the South Boston elected delegation really for uh, your continued interest and input and engagement uh, over the past four years um, as we've been talking about uh, actively this project. Uh, lastly, just a quick thank you to the BPDA staff for all your coordination um, and efforts um, you know, throughout that process. It's been a robust process. Um, but it's one that's, you know, in, in our opinion, helped vastly improve, you know, the direction of the project, the mix of uses, the open spaces, and ultimately the creation of uh, what we would think of as a very significant um, community benefits package that as a development team, we're very proud of. Uh, we think we've included a lot of community partners and ultimately, uh, you know, the, the package offers a wide range of, of benefits. Uh, in terms of development, we're very excited to have the opportunity, um, as Chris mentioned, you know, to, to, to reconnect this site really to the neighborhood, um, but also in that process, connect the neighborhood down to the waterfront um, and create significant open space for the community. So 5.7 acres of open space um, through that process. We also have a tremendous opportunity um, in front of us relative to the adaptive reuse of the existing turbine halls. These are great spaces. Um, high volume spaces that are extremely unique um, and really, you know, I think done right. We envision these these buildings being the heart and soul of the project um, and, and honoring, you know, some of the past, uh, but also creating, you know, really unique spaces for the community. Um, here with me tonight on the development team, we have Melissa Schrock from Hillco, uh, Greg Bialecki uh, from Redgate. We also have BK Boley from Stantec, our master plan architect. Um, and Chris Reed from Stoss, our landscape architect. Um, in addition, several other team members will be available to answer questions after the presentation. With that, thank you again for, for everybody, to everybody for their involvement um, in the project to date, and I'll turn it over to Greg Bialecki. Unmute myself, can you hear me now? Uh, thank you, Ben, and a good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you can see from this image here that uh, our property is located at the corner of Summer Street and East First Street in South Boston, about a mile and a half from South Station. You can also see from this image that it's uh, in a transitional location. Uh, our neighbor on one side is Conley Terminal, the region's container port. Uh, and our neighbor on the other side is a wonderful residential neighborhood of South Boston. Next slide, please. The site has been used, as Steve Harvey mentioned, for the Generation Electric Power for over a century. The first building was built there in 1898. As power generation technologies have changed over time, they shuttered one building and built a new one right next to it. They did this again and again for many decades, resulting in the site as you see it now. Next slide, please. Before we started the permitting process, uh, as Chris Bush referred to, we uh, participated with the city planning staff in the community uh, in a process uh, of listening. We invited the community to come onto the site and into the buildings. We literally had hundreds of people on our tours, many of whom were lifelong residents of the neighborhood, but had never actually set foot on the site. We also held community listening sessions, as you heard. They resulted in a series of guiding principles for the redevelopment that we still continue to use. We were asked to do several things. Number one, tear down the walls and fences surrounding the site and create connections for the community to walk across and through the property. Number two, fully remediate the remaining environmental contamination at the site and make the site safe for neighborhood families to use. Number three, as Ben mentioned, we were invited to repurpose and reuse the four magnificent turbine halls in the middle of the site in a way that respects their industrial history of innovation, but also reimagines some exciting new uses. 
Fourth, we're asked to create a variety of open spaces that the community will actually use and enjoy. And fifth, we were asked to do all this in a way that's respectful of Connolly Terminal, a major job creator for the community and the region that we all want to see to continue to thrive and grow. We believe our plan accomplishes all these objectives. This image is a good overview of the site, but I wanna show you quickly a closer look at some of the challenges we face in achieving that vision. Next slide. This is a view along East First Street, standing at the eastern edge of the site. You can see that I wasn't kidding about the site literally being walled off from the neighborhood. The sidewalks are also narrow and hardly passable. This is not a friendly city block. Next slide, please. Now we're showing you a view uh, closer to Summer Street, but you can see the same conditions here. Next slide, please. Uh, now we're in the corner of East First Street and Summer Street. This is where we need to take down the existing buildings and get to the environmental contamination that is underneath them. Next slide, please. And now we're on Summer Street. You're actually looking at the Boston Harbor waterfront here, although you could hardly tell that. This needs to be opened up to the public and our plan will do that. Next slide, please. And here are a variety of image from inside these terrific turbine halls. We intend to creatively reuse these great old buildings so that they become, as Ben said, the heart and soul of the redevelopment. I'll now ask Chris Reed to give you an overview of our redevelopment site plan. Next slide, please. Great. <clears throat> the site plan is really centered on, uh, organized around these historic turbine structures at the center of the uh, site, as well as a new destination waterfront park, which for the first time will allow for direct waterfront access uh, to the folks uh, who currently live in the neighborhood. Uh, we carefully integrate uh, the site with the existing neighborhood as well, first by extending M Street uh, on the top, uh, from Christopher Lee Playground all the way directly to the waterfront itself. Uh, and then also open up the site with a series of publicly accessible pedestrian ways through the middle of the buildings uh, as a, a series of garden pathways. Uh, and then along the bottom edge of the turbine halls uh, as an industrial historic uh, alleyway. We also extend uh, Elkin Street uh, from the bottom of this image up through the site, dramatically cutting through turbine halls two and three, um, and then string along a series of open spaces, small, medium uh, scale open spaces for gathering that culminate in a new neighborhood community park uh, with sport court at the corner of M Street uh, and Elkins. This is BK Boley Stantec Architecture. You can see that within our landscape infrastructure, we have 1.68 million square feet of uses that range between commercial, housing, hotel, retail. And as Greg had mentioned, we have a very small civic space for a museum that you will see images of within the turbine hall itself. Next, please. We tried to do a diagram here that tied open space improvements to development parcels. The phase into the project that is gonna happen over a number of years will be based really upon market conditions, but we wanted to make sure that there were open space and public improvements that were tied to each development and in each building as it comes up. Next. This is the massing that we came to with the BCDC and the BPDA planning and design staff. Uh, you can see we've held down the heights of the buildings along East First Street so that they're slightly lower than Turbine Hall 3. Turbine Hall 3 sticks out and there is almost no sidewalk on that side. So from Greg's image, and as you'll see later, we're running the sidewalk through a double height space out to Summer Street. Next. In addition to pulling most of the height towards the center of the site, we've also chamfered back buildings. So the building on the right-hand side on Summer Street, you can see steps back away from the water. And then the building on the left-hand side coming down M Street, we found from our view corridor kind of studies that if we chamfered that back, it would open up the bluff um, in the park that Chris is designing and get stronger views all the way down to the water from up on the hill on M Street. Next. 
So this is a PDA master plan, um, but we did produce design guidelines for the character of the buildings, the height envelope of the building. So this is an example of what it might look like. Here you're looking down East First Street, building A is on the right-hand side. You can see also on the left-hand side how we've more than doubled the sidewalk on that side of East First Street. There are also separated bike lanes running the entire length down to Summer Street. Next. If you're down at the L Street, Summer Street intersection with East First Street, you can see how we pulled the buildings back from the sidewalk a, a great deal. Um, and then you can see Turbine Hall 3 a little bit farther up on the right-hand side of this image. So that's where that double height pass-through is bringing cyclists and pedestrians or pedestrians all the way down to this corner. Next. In addition to the setbacks that we have at the base of the building, our towers are set back even farther. So this is the only residential building that we have that is on fronting Summer Street. Um, and then you can see the general arrangement of the, of the massing around that. Next. This is a view of the waterfront park as if you're standing on the sidewalk uh, along Summer Street. So the idea is to really open it up, be fully publicly accessible. And then you see a series of uh, lawns, decks, terraces that step up uh, toward the buildings, uh, creating uh, opportunities for gathering uh, for neighborhood families. Uh, and again, featuring some of the historic artifacts on the site. Next. Uh, from the opposite end uh, of the park. This is the end of M Street uh, extension, uh, which results in this great overlook uh, and a series of steps and terraces and ramps that cascade down uh, to the water, uh, to a tidal park. You can also begin to understand how the terracing will protect uh, this uh, site and the neighborhood uh, from sea level rise and storm surge in the future. Next. And then finally, one of the interior open spaces here where activity from the uh, historic 1898 building is allowed to spill out into and enliven uh, the public realm. So these turbine halls, we think are some of the great hidden gems of the city of Boston, but not just that, probably of the East Coast. They have incredible potential. So what we're doing here is we're peeling off the old brick skin that had no windows on this end of this turbine hall to kind of unveil the excitement of what could happen inside. That combined with artistic graphics and other things and the things that Chris is doing is gonna bring real energy from the center all the way out to the water. The next two slides are really of peaks into the turbine halls themselves. So here we have a cut through that goes through Turbine Hall 2. So this is Elkin Street and you're looking into the museum that we're going to going to create. That is an original turbine from the from the building um, and you can see there's a kind of great porosity here. We want to have great visibility and then you can see Elkin Street kind of going up to M Street on the left. This last image is Thank you. This last image is of Turbine Hall 1, and we have a double height market that we're thinking about creating here with lots of small vendors, very, very flexible space, great energy, um, and we're really trying to highlight the beautiful, beautiful tile work that is on the existing walls of the building, as well as the terracotta roof and the wonderful skylight that goes the distance. Melissa? Next slide, please. We're pleased to present the substantial public benefits and mitigation package associated with the project. And we'd like to credit the advocacy of South Boston residents, business owners, and their elected officials for helping us to create this package. There are a number of South Boston community or oriented benefits, including a perpetual scholarship endowment of a million dollars, four annual internships for South Boston residents and participants of the commercial real estate success training program, apprenticeships geared towards South Boston residents, veterans, and Building Pathways graduates, incentives for South Boston small businesses and other disadvantaged small businesses to lease up to 10% of the retail space. 120 parking spaces will be made available to South Boston residents free of charge on nights, weekends, and during snow emergencies. We're also making a contribution of $1.75 million to the Medal of Honor Park at Christopher Lee Playground. Not listed here, we also look forward to working with the South Boston Association of Nonprofits and the South Boston Chamber of Commerce as the project advances. 
Additionally, the project will pay into the city of Boston's linkage funds. We estimate $7.3 million will go into the housing fund and another 1.4 into the workforce training fund. Next slide, please. On the transportation front, we've committed to funding an MBTA subsidy to improve service to the City Point neighborhood. It will be funded over a period of 10 years and includes an annual escalator for a total of approximately $11.2 million. As you saw in the renderings, we'll be making improvements to the summer and east first street uh, sidewalks and their streets themselves, including new wider sidewalks along both sides of east first street down to the far side of the park at Acadia Street. We'll be making Vision Zero improvements to eight South Boston, Boston intersections to be prioritized by the community and installing smart signals and fiber optic cables along the Summer and L Street corridor. There'll be alternative transportation infrastructure delivered with the project as, long as, as, as well as in the implementation of an ongoing transportation demand management plan. All told, that's approximately $48.8 million of improvements and benefits the majority of which is located in the South Boston neighborhood and the City Point neighborhood. Additionally, there will be on-site public realm improvements estimated at approximately $100 million. That includes the creation of the waterfront park and other open spaces, the adaptive reuse of the turbine halls, including civic and cultural space, the environmental remediation of the site and the new street grid. In terms of affordable housing, the project has made the extraordinary commitment to provide all units on-site in addition to the 13% of IDP units, the project will provide an extra 3% of middle income units on both the rental and home ownership side for a total of 16% of income restricted units, the value of which is estimated to be between 70 and $80 million. At full build, the annual tax revenue is approximately $11.6 million. And lastly, we expect the project to create over 2,500 construction jobs and over 1,500 permanent jobs. If we are fortunate enough to receive board approval this evening, we look forward to transforming this site with a history of industrial innovation into a mixed use community integrated into the surrounding South Boston neighborhood, providing waterfront access and community amenities and offering new opportunities for housing, economic development and future innovations befitting our 21st century creative economy. We thank you for your kind attention and our team is available to take comments or answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so as this is a public hearing, we will do um, the public testimony portion uh, first and then take board's uh, question and comments. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, Councillor Michael Flaherty. Good evening, Teresa, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Councillor Lodge Michael Flaherty. I'd like to offer brief remarks about today's vote on the master plan for the planned development area for 776 Summer Street. Over the course of, uh, I think it's over four years now, uh, hundreds of residents have devoted countless hours uh, of their and their respective families' time to attend meetings about this project in an effort to learn, ask questions, and provide valuable feedback about the project uh, with respect to the development team, the BPDA, as well as my elected colleagues and myself. And through Throughout the whole process, residents have aired their concerns about the environmental mitigation of the site, the overall size and scope of the project, the traffic and transit impacts, affordable housing opportunities for residents, open space and climate resiliency impacts, the impact on the operations of the neighboring port, and importantly, uh, the ongoing continued mitigation to the South Boston community. The former Edison Power Plant has been a landmark in South Boston for a long time. A lot of people in the town have worked for the Edison over the years. However, many South Boston residents have suffered from increased rates of cancer, asthma, lupus, scleroderma, in part because of the adverse impact, environmental impacts that the plant has had on the surrounding neighborhood. Let us not forget the nine alarm fire back in 2002 when our first responders were exposed to harmful, harmful chemical toxins. Uh, many of our first responders uh, still suffer today and a few have passed away uh, due to the injury sustained on that day. This project provides an opportunity to remediate the site in accordance with federal and state standards. And importantly, as a result of community and elected official advocacy, the project will fund a licensed site professional working on behalf of the neighborhood alongside the development team to review the environmental remediation plans. There have also been critical adjustments to affordable housing and corresponding linkage package 
in addition to the 13% of the all residential housing units on the project, uh, which are going to be on site being affordable, there'll be an additional 6% of income restricted housing designated for middle income levels available for rent and home ownership. This is a deliberate effort to provide an opportunity for more young men and women from the town who grew up here and are educated here, uh, who may be working decent jobs, uh, earning a pretty good wage or salary, but not crushing it, uh, but they're carrying student loan debt and or car payments, et cetera, and they're unable to afford market rents in the neighborhood. Uh, and as a result of which, uh, there's an opportunity here for them to continue to stay in the town that they call home. The linkage funding generated by this project will be used to expand affordable residential projects in the South Boston neighborhood as well, as explicitly spelled out in the board memo. There are also improvements made to the site uh, to lessen the impacts in the surrounding community, a reduction in the total square footage in the building height, and improvements in traffic, transit, and pedestrian safety mitigation plans, as well as commitments made to annually monitor traffic impacts. There are more focused job and workforce development opportunities included in the opportunity benefits package in a time where many local small businesses are struggling to stay afloat due to the pandemic. There is a commitment here to give preference to support locally owned South Boston businesses in the city and state certified disadvantaged businesses for retail and pop up space. Importantly, there's an ongoing focus outreach to the South Boston community about opportunities being created at the site, whether it's housing opportunities, construction employment, permanent employment, small business contracting and retail leasing. This is a direct result of resident concerns and their lived experience about large project benefits not being felt and absorbed by the people who live here. There is a commitment from the development team in the BPDA to make sure that the uh, that those benefits flow to the, imp the impacted community, the folks that are feeling and will be bearing the brunt uh, of the construction issues as well as uh, traffic uh, down the road. So. There's still enormous work to be done on the project. I feel like it's, we're still in the first inning. Residents will, will still have ongoing concerns. Uh, I know that uh, today's vote does not end the community process. I've uh, been on the council and the longest serving council and I can tell you that this will now usher in another phase of community engagement about each individual phase, which is probably gonna be a 15 year project. So there will be additional uh, community process and review. There'll also be additional review by a next door neighbor, uh, Massport. Uh, their team uh, on, uh, regarding uh, ongoing concerns and impacts with respect to their port operation, as well as how it will impact uh, our beloved longshoremen, many of whom live uh, in the neighborhood. So I'm committed to continuing to apply pressure to the development team as the process continues to ensure that the community priorities, such as the concerns around traffic impacts, pedestrian safety challenges, and the environmental and health impacts during the construction phase are included and continue to be addressed. And so hopefully we can continue to do that in partnership uh, with my neighbors on behalf of all the elected officials in an effort to uh, get this project to move to the next phase. So with that, um, I'm available through any specific questions from uh, uh, members of the board, happy to entertain them. Other than that, I know they have a full evening of testimony. I appreciate the courtesy and look forward to hearing additional testimony. And again, we'll pledge uh, to work with my colleagues in government uh, and also by my neighbors, uh, most importantly, is at the end of the day, I work for them and, uh, and we'll continue to whatever issues that they raise and want brought forward. I'll continue to fight to make sure that their quality of life is protected uh, as uh, someone that's born and raised here and someone that tends to be uh, in public service for, uh, for for a time. Thank you very much, uh, Teresa, and good to see you, and uh, thank you to the ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you, Councillor. Ann Earhart, go ahead and unmute yourself. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Ann Earhart. I am an, am an owner and co-founder of Boston Urban Partners, a Boston-based retail real estate firm. I'm also a resident of South Boston. I'd like to commend the development team for listening to um, the needs and wants of the community and creating what I believe will truly be a place for all in this neighborhood. As someone who's choosing to raise a young family in the city, I'm particularly excited about the public public realm improvements, um, all of the new places that our family can go to get out of our condo, which we'll be very excited to do uh, when this pandemic is over. And from um, a business standpoint, I think that the curated retail vision that the team has come up with um, 
will just help bring more best in class amenities to what's already, in my opinion, a pretty fantastic neighborhood. So with all that said, uh, I support this project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Earhart. Uh, Secretary Paul Hamas, you're on mute. Sorry, thank you, Madam Chair. Congressman Lynch, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, hi there. Uh, okay. Thank you for allowing me. I got a few things going on here, so uh, I'm gonna have to jump in and then jump out, but this is a very important project. Uh, thank you for holding this. And uh, I know that uh, among the South Boston elected officials, we've been back and forth with the BPDA and, and uh and Brian Golden and others to try to iron this out. This has been a multi-year uh, project. If I could just, I know we have people that are new to the community. Uh, and so I, I just wanna remind people that this has been a long, long, long process. Uh, I actually started out on this, this uh, first street um, 25 years ago, we had a number of uh, neighbors in the area whose, whose loved ones had come down with uh, lupus and, and scleroderma, uh, uh, autoimmune diseases. And uh, as a newly elected state representative, uh, I went with my staff, we went door to door handing out flyers, asking people if they had, we were working with the uh, Harvard School of Public Health and they had asked us to do a survey. And so that's when we began with the long, long process of cleaning up First Street. And uh, I know that Lucky Devlin uh, worked with us on that and Mary Cooney and Al Roach and a lot of the neighbors down there. Uh, and we were able to get a, a health study done. We also were able to get rid of uh, white fuel. Uh, later on, it was controlled, you know, run by El Paso, Nat El Paso Natural Gas but we got that the tank site cleaned up. Then we went to work on the MBTA power station, which was a, a major, major uh, environmental hazard. It was a, a time bomb full with uh, tons of asbestos. And it took us a long time. I worked with uh, then uh, Attorney General Scott Harshbarger, uh, who agreed for the first time to give us uh, an independent site professional to work on behalf of the neighbors uh, in terms of taking that all down. So it, you know, we've, we've, we've done a lot of work all along First Street. Uh, we created that dog park, uh, trying to create a residential street uh, instead of the, the, you know, the huge amount of truck traffic that we had there. Um, of course, we also created the Tom Butler a bypass road to put the trucks on the on the uh, industrial property. And then most recently we did a, a land swap uh, to give the port of Boston, you know, the maritime port, more land in, in exchange for land that was more uh, in line with the residential community. So, uh, and on top of that, uh, working with uh, Nick Collins and, and David Beal, uh, we got, $360 million in federal money. And uh, they came up with, uh, I think it was $30 million from the state level to actually do dredging so that the port of Boston would work. So this has been a, this has been a labor of love for me in many respects. Uh, I worked down there in Conley Terminal as an iron worker. Um, and I've been able to witness all of the, the changes going back to the days when it was really uh, Senate President Bulger and, and Mike Flaherty and Ray Flynn and people like Jimmy Kelly that, that worked on this and, and then the rest of us came in afterward. But uh, I've also seen this project start. I think there were 3,000 residential uh, units first proposed and uh, I'm very happy to see that it's down to 600 and change now from 3,000. Uh, after all, we would trying to reduce the uh, traffic congestion in this area. And I think putting 3,000 units down there would have uh, sort of been a reversal of, of, the, of the trend down there. So, um, and, and I do want to give great credit to the neighbors and the rest of the wider community because the changes in this project would not have come 
uh, but for the the resistance to the initial proposal. So I, I really want to thank my neighbors, uh, my constituents, my friends uh, who have insisted upon the changes here that have have made this a much, much better project. And I, I, I want to thank the uh, development team as well for listening. It wasn't easy. This is a complete transformation from what we first looked at it, as I'm sure those of you who were there at the beginning uh, understand. I want to echo the remarks of the previous speaker about, you know, the, the public public realm and and the the uh, the the park uh, on 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 the channel, uh, opening up that space. I, I love the idea about extending the the streets in the community down into this area, uh, so that it becomes a, a a part of the neighborhood. I'm also delighted that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very nervous about the maritime and industrial port. That's a great job generator. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very happy with the change uh, in making it more research and development in, in close to the uh, Massport property and, and the maritime and industrial activities. I, I, I saw a certain amount of incompatibility in the initial proposal where you had residential right up against the cranes and and the trucking and that would have been an unhappy relationship uh, going forward so this one there seems to be a reasonable buffer uh, between the residential neighborhood and and the uh, the maritime industrial port uh, there's a lot to like about this proposal uh, I, I i'm very happy you know i I've gone. I've done a couple of jobs down there when it was a power plant, and we had to clean the screens out, and uh, periodically go in there and uh, and and refit it with with uh, pollution control devices and things like that. So uh, I've been in those old uh, those those old uh, turbine rooms, and they're absolutely beautiful with the old ceramic walls, and being able to save that and turn it into uh, a, a space for the community uh, and, and for restaurants and, and that and the commitments that have been made to, to affordable housing. I know that by reducing the, the number of units from 3,000 to 600, we eliminated a, a, a large portion of, of uh, affordable housing. But that's, that's the, the trade-off there. But there'll still be a significant number of affordable units and uh, God knows we need those in the neighborhood. There's a lot of lot of good in this project. I also am, am uh, very happy about the commitment to to allow local businesses to have a place down there, uh, so that some of these businesses that have been with us for generations will have an opportunity to capitalize on on the investment here. And uh, and I want to thank my my colleagues in government. You know, uh, put a lot of hours in on this. Uh, you know, from Senator Collins and, and uh, Rep Senator Hart as well, I might add, going back uh, to the day, but uh, but also uh, Representative David Beal and uh, Mike Flaherty, who has has a real history down there. He's uh, he's very very he's the most hands-on person I know in government today. He's he's absolutely superb, and uh, and Ed Flynn, who has uh, really handled. Uh, the traffic management, the the gritty stuff that's going to mean the most to the community in terms of, you know, parking and traffic and safety and pedestrian uh, walkways, things like that. He's been relentless on, on on a lot of this stuff. And and this isn't the obviously this isn't the final step, but it's a significant uh, uh, inflection point, I would say, that uh, that the project's moving forward. So. Uh, I want to thank everybody who has put the time and effort on this. I think it's a much, much, much better project than was first proposed. And uh, I think that unless I'm missing something, uh, you know, from from every aspect of this, from the height of the buildings to the the massing to to the uh, the design and layout, the components of, of the project itself, it has been totally transformed in response to the neighborhood concerns. So I'm very happy about the responsiveness here. And uh, 
I, I'm excited about the possibilities that this this project's offers going forward. We still have some work to do, no question about that, but I'm, I'm happy at where we are right now uh, as a result of the, the tremendous work that's been put in uh, by all parties, by, by the, my, our local elected officials, by our neighbors and friends and community groups and the affordable housing folks. Uh, I, I think it's really uh, been a, a transformation uh, to the betterment of, of the entire community and to the city. So, and, and I appreciate the, uh, <clears throat> the leverage that the city of Boston gave to us uh, during this whole process. They, they kept telling the development team, you need to go back because the community's not happy. The elected officials still have issues. You've got to go back. And that's why it took so long. That's why it's taken several years. Um, but I think we're, we're at that inflection point where uh, this project is much better and, and much more a reflection of the wishes of the community. So uh, like I said, I'm going to have to jump off. I'm on another call with uh, the House of Representatives, and I appreciate everybody being involved here. And uh, I have a couple of staff that are going to stay on the call, stay on the meeting, and then report back what, what the input of the rest of the uh, community and, and, and others uh, will be in the duration of this call. So uh, thank you very much. And I apologize having to jump off. We just got so much stuff going on at once here. It's always the way, right? But uh, God bless you. Be safe. Be safe. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thank, thank you. you, Congressman. And, uh, and thank you for the work that you're doing uh, as well. Thank you. Rep uh, S Senator Collins, you can unmute yourself. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Um, and thank you to the board uh, uh, for hosting this meeting tonight, um, to the congressman for his mm -hmm. remarks and giving us that history, uh, to the BPDA for working with us over the last couple of years. I know that, um, as I said, uh, we had a member of the team that both got married and had a child during this process. So it was a long one, but uh, a one that I think... Um, was worthy of, uh, of of the time and the effort. I think it improved along the way uh, the project in, in, in a way that um, I think the community responded to the community's concerns as the congressman points out and there's great history there um, as it relates to the evolution of the corridor and, and, it, and the cleanup. Um, from the beginning, our, our concerns um, were not just community concerns around the mix and traffic and pedestrian safety, on affordable housing um, percentages that have been increased and the other issues um, significantly mitigated. Um, more, most recently in the updated proposal, a significant increase to the open space. That has been a concern for me um, with the, the, the density of the project and what that could mean for M Street Park and the facilities there. Um, you know, I want to express the uh, you know, support for that commitment to M Street Park's maintenance and um, um, an investment to that infrastructure, not insignificant, as well as the perpetual scholarship fund, uh, the internship program uh, proposed uh, in, in the coordination with the development team and their contractors, um, and, and, and opportunities both for local residents and, and others, um, you know, aspiring professionals in the field. Um, I think that um, that commitment spelled out marked a, a major shift from sort of the open ended. Uh, intentions, um, you know, albeit, you know, sincere, um, you know, I think made a big difference uh, for, for the community to be comfortable with what that was going to mean for the community long term. And this is a long term project, as we know, we're roughly 10 to 15 years. And I want to acknowledge the, the adjustments made for the retail and commercial sector. Uh, I hope uh, precedent setting. I know that um, there's been a concern around the city about the ability to to access affordable retail, and uh, the commitment in this PDA is not insignificant. 10% uh, of the retail space at 25% discount um, for local and disadvantaged businesses. Uh, so I want to uh, bring rise to that uh, commitment in this proposal, as well as the increase at the advocacy of the community and particularly the city councilors on the increase of affordable housing percentages, both home ownership and rental. Um, and, you know, the accommodation 
for the relocation of where housing would be. As somebody along with the congressman and the local delegation, the mayor as well, who has spent a lot of time advocating for a more competitive port. And uh, we see that bearing out now during the COVID-19 crisis that um, you know, while our tourism in sections around uh, the Mass Port Authority and their partners has taken a, a hit, that Conley Terminal has remained strong and has remained viable. Um, probably the best revenue source they have as an agency. So I want to acknowledge that and how important that is and how this conversation moves to other agencies at the state level in partnership with the city um, is still critical to, to uh, ensure that the longshoremen and the interests as it relates to our port are protected and preserved and that they're uh, going to see a benefit from this as well. Uh, so I know this moves on to some other areas, including the environmental, which is a major concern to the community. Um, and that, you know, we know that conversation is going to take place at the state level, again, in partnership with the city. But, um, you know, I think there's more to, to learn during that process, given the nature of this facility and the site, mm -hmm. the history, as uh, the congressman uh, pointed out and, and the councilor, uh, that, you know, the environmental cleanup for this site is incredibly important and definitely a desire of the, of the, of the surrounding community, but also a concern so that it's done right, it's done with the right precautions, um, and that, you know, we're, we're doing it in a way that's not going to, you know, uh, put people at risk. And, and, and obviously it's a trust but verify situation that I know we'll be uh, continuing to stay diligent on. But I think, you know, the period from when this began to where it is now is a marked difference. And one I think is reflective of the, the real partnership the BRA or BPDA has had, uh, you know, um, wor working with us, walking with us on this. Um, you know, through some, you know, difficult conversations. Um, and, you know, what's great about this is we know the economic impact that it's going to have, a shared one from the, the building trades and the amount of jobs it's going to create and the partnerships that they're committing to as it relates to access uh, to new apprenticeships locally um, and what that means. Because I think the, what, what this project now does which I don't think it did from the beginning, is now speaks to the future people have at it and what that can uh, mean for people and changing their, um, their stock in life as it relates to accessing housing or accessing jobs uh, in business. Um, the commitments to um, the local community, to the broader community, to our veterans community are, are specific here. And I think that um, that's also a reflection of the conversations that, that we've had and uh, while there's uh, some transition um, that's going to take place ahead of us, we feel good about where this um, conversation has gone and where it's going, where it'll continue to go. So thank you for the opportunity tonight. Thank you for working with us um, and appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, Senator. Greg Geller, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, this is uh, Greg Gaylor, the Executive Director of the Boston Preservation Alliance. Uh, we're a historic preservation advocacy organization representing over 40 nonprofit organizations, over 100 businesses, and hundreds of individuals throughout the city. And I do want to disclose that Redgate and Hillco and others on the project team are corporate members of the alliance. We support this project as one that allows the city to evolve while embracing and celebrating its past. As you heard, these are unique and beautiful buildings and their adaptive reuse makes sense environmentally too. The team is engaged with us from early on and sought and made adjustments based on our expertise on historic resources. And the Alliance is looking forward to working with them to evolve the design details as this project unfolds. Now, while in many instances, the Boston Preservation Alliance has had serious concerns about the use of PDAs, this is exactly the type of site where it makes complete sense. The project will open a large site long unavailable to the public and allow residents, visitors, and all of us to engage with places that were truly central to the history and development of the city. And the Boston Preservation Alliance is pleased to ask the board to vote in favor of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Eileen Smith, you can unmute yourself. Eileen, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, 
Steve, I'm uh, unmuted at this time. Yep, you're good. Thank you. I actually sent a uh, letter in. Uh, I am a resident and a, a long acting member of the IAG. And I believe that's going to be read tonight. Am I correct? If you testify in person, we do not read the letter. Okay, then I will not testify. Um, thank you. I would rather have my brief letter read tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Gary Walker. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board, um, Madam Secretary, Director Golden, uh, Gary Walker, representing electricians and technicians of Local 103. I'd like to speak in a, in a strong support of this project, and I'd really like to personally thank uh, Hillco in Redgate for continuing um, this process. I know it was tough for them, and they went through an awful lot to get this thing done, and I know that there'll be jobs that are created for South Boston residents as well as uh, many Boston residents, and um, I, uh, I, I support the project. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Lawrence Norton, you can unmute yourself. Hi, I'm Larry Norton, a lifelong South Boston resident. I endorse this project wholeheartedly. I feel it rids the community of a 13 year dormant eyesore and replaces it with a beautiful, accessible addition to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Jamie McNeil, you can unmute yourself. Thank you, Secretary Palamas. Thank you, uh, um, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Jamie McNeil, Hotel Workers Union, Local 26 here in Boston. I'd like to go on record in strong support of this project. We currently have 10,000 unemployed members. Um, so we, we need this project. We need the good hotel jobs. We need the good construction jobs. We need the support for the South Boston small businesses. We need the partnership with the veterans community. We need the $1.4 million in job training um, to, to stop the bleeding of the jobs. We need a tourniquet here. And this project is exactly that. It's gonna help Boston recover coming out of COVID and support our South Boston residents and the Boston residents. So we're in full support. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. Donna Brown, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, I'm Donna Brown. I'm a neighborhood resident of South Boston, right up the street from this project. And I'm the executive director of South Boston Neighborhood Development Corporation, a nonprofit that provides affordable housing. My concern about this project is the lack of commitment to affordable housing and the impact of the project on displacement of low and moderate income residents in our neighborhood. Over the last decade and a half, South Boston has seen a tremendous amount of development and a tremendous amount of displacement. And, and while the developers have increased the percentage of affordability for moderate income residents, units at 130% of area median income will do nothing to mitigate the displacement of our seniors in our community. The elderly are our most vulnerable residents the pressures of the housing market on them are tremendous and it is heartbreaking. And this project is doing very little to mitigate the displacement of residents. If you contrast this project with the proposal for Dorchester Bay City on the other side of our neighborhood, that project is proposing a fund to prevent displacement by acquiring rental housing in the neighborhoods around that project. This project does nothing to address the needs of our most vulnerable residents. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you. Will you unmute yourself? Um, hi, I'm uh, Gwil York and I'm a member of the Green Ribbon Commission and I was wondering, uh, the, the, uh, the project seems excellent. I'm wondering um, how much of a sea level rise does the park uh, plan on accommodating? Uh, Madam Chair, do you wanna allow the question to be answered now or do you wanna handle it later? Um, let's get let's get through the, um, if you wanna give, um, 
let's just go ahead and handle it now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Can someone from the development team respond to that question, please? Yes, so the project is designed uh, to account for sea level rise according to Boston's 2070 uh, uh, flood numbers. I, th I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but um, it is we are raising the entire site like four to five feet um, and so that we can accommodate sea level rise. And um, it's designed to meet the 2070 flood expectations or sea level right. rise expectations rather. Thank you. Thank you. We, we might have some follow up questions. Let's go ahead on those on those questions. Um, you know, uh, if you do have concerns, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and raise them um, at the end of the public testimony, um, just to kind of uh, um, move things along. But we will we will uh, definitely visit all of these topics. Hi, good evening. My name is Sean Conley. I'm a resident of South Boston. I'd like to express my support for this project as proposed here this evening. My support will also be contingent that this project is done 100% union. I'd like to thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. Um, Secretary Pilhimis, you're on mute, but we'll go ahead and uh, have um, minor press. Good evening, Madam Ch Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, Madam Chair Rojas, uh, members of the board, Director Golden, uh, first of all, Happy New Year. I hope you have a, an amazing year and hopefully I get to finally see you all in person this year. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, on behalf of uh, hundreds of union carpenters, I want to go on record and support of this project. I want to thank all our elected officials for their support, in particularly Mayor Walsh for allowing the community to be part of the process. I also uh, want to make sure that um, kudos to the developer Red Gay and Helco. They did an amazing job in the outreach to the community. All questions were answered, all concerns were addressed, and, and yet we have a long way to go, but uh, I'm quite comfortable with supporting them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Laura Arms, you can unmute yourself. Hi, um, I'm Laura Ames. Um, I'm an owner and a resident um, in South Boston. Uh, I'm in strong support of the project. Um, I think, you know, a couple of points I just wanted to highlight. Um, I think, you know, number one, removing the environmental hazards that the site um, currently has, I think is obviously a, one of the biggest importance um, in being able to take this project and really um, transition it and, and create a space for the community that people want to you know, go to and use. Um, I think the ability to put in the retail and to support local retail is incredibly important, um, as well as the green space, um, being able to have, you know, 5.7 acres of walkable space, I, I think is incredible. Um, I also think that a big lesson can be learned from our nearby seaport waterfront. Uh, you know, I think we can this pro what this project has done is really, you know, seen what wasn't done there and really embraced that here and really making this walkable waterfront area, I think is, again, a, a big benefit. Uh, the other um, kind of two points, I think the, you know, the $1.7 million towards the Medal of Honor Park for me is, is, a, big, um, is a big benefit as well uh, as a mother of a, a two and a half year old. My daughter goes to that park uh, pretty much, you know, twice a day. Uh, so being able to continue to see that area be um, managed from a maintenance perspective as well as continued improvements um, is very is very beneficial just for us as a family. And then lastly, kind of a, a small piece, but um, uh, when I moved to South Boston uh, four or five years ago, I, I used to bike in the city all the time. And I found that uh, in this particular neighborhood, biking to parts of the seaport and back bay, I felt um, actually pretty unsafe relative to some other neighborhoods. So I think being able to offer some benefits to bikers as well is um, an, another attribute. So again, strongly support the project. Thank you, Laura. Susie Bigliani, you can unmute yourself. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Susie. I am a um, owner and resident of South Boston and I also work uh, just up the street on Dry Dock Avenue. 
Um, and I am also uh, voicing my support for this project. I have a almost two year old and I can um, say that there are there are a lot of young families um, like ours in South Boston these days and there really aren't enough spaces to gather and um, sort of family oriented spaces and green spaces. There are a few, but definitely not enough. And particularly um, the turbine hall, the food court, all of these these incredible um, amenities that will benefit the entire neighborhood, I think will just um, be an incredible, incredible resource. And not to mention, as I was saying, I work on dry dock. When you, when you take that walk, it's, it really is this dead zone um, that you kind of have to get through in a way. And I think that it will be incredibly transformative. So I just want to uh, voice my support. And I think that's my little guy in the background also voicing his, if you can hear him. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. And for all the work uh, that has been put onto this project. Thank you. Caroline Clifford, you can unmute yourself. Hi, good evening. Um, can everybody hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the board and Madam Chair for giving me an opportunity to speak. As an owner and a resident of South Boston, I want to express my support for the L Street Station project for the following reasons. I think first and foremost, like Laura Ames mentioned, is that the environmental remediation of the site to the state and federal government standards is of the utmost importance. Um, the opening of the site to the neighborhood and the creation of public access across the site um, and through the site for the first time in over 100 years, I think, is another big plus. I think what this project also does is it takes advantage of the city's greatest asset, which is being on the water and creating direct access to the water for residents. Um, additionally, the 5.7 acres of public open space um, would be hugely important for South Boston. As mentioned, there aren't that many areas of gathering spaces and open green spaces. I think the community and civic benefits um, are, you know, wonderful. And I think the 1 million in the South Boston Scholarship Endowment is exceptional. I think the affordable residential opportunities is really important. And then, of course, the redevelopment, while also honoring the history of the site, I think is also of the utmost importance. So I thank everyone for their time and their effort on this project. And I, again, am expressing my support for it. And I look forward to to seeing how it gets developed. Thank you. Aline Caldwell, you can unmute yourself. Hi, yes, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. And I just wanted to voice um, my support overwhelmingly for this project for really all the reasons discussed, but particularly, you know, as an owner, I look out my um, living room and just see this hideous abandoned building and would just love to have something there that the community can really take advantage of that will create jobs, utilize a waterfront, create open space, um, and the Medal of Honor Park being two blocks away. Just really uh, thrilled to see that there's going to be some additional improvements made to that park. Thanks so much for this opportunity. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Vincent Coyle, you can unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Vincent Coyle, representative of the Iowa Workers of Local 7 here in South Boston. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the uh, Madam Chair and the development team for working with the South Boston residents on this project to get through this process. I rise in favor of this project. Uh, this, this building has been an abandoned for years, and it's good to see finally come to use if we can get through this process. This project will not only produce construction jobs, but will also have future jobs for the South Boston residents. Uh, I like what they have to offer, um, scholarships for the high school students, playground for the community, and all the rest of the amenities. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Sheehan, you can unmute yourself. Hi, good evening. I want to thank Madam Chair and the board members for letting me speak tonight. Um, my name is Michael Sheehan. I'm a business representative for the Sheet Metal Workers Local 17. I have generations of sheet metal workers from South Boston who would love to be on this project. Uh, I think the team did a great job. The, the development team did a fantastic job. Um, I also represent a, a lot of men and women, journeymen and women from the city of Boston. It provides a, This will provide a living wage for them to continue living in the city. Um, 
getting rid of the eyesore that is there now would be uh, terrific. And also um, bring up the real estate for the residents of South Boston. Uh, I am in favor of this project and thank you for um, the time tonight. Thank you. Anthony O'Flaherty, you can unmute yourself. Anthony. Go ahead. Hello, sorry. Uh, okay. I'm Anthony O'Flaherty. Um, I live about three blocks from this uh, project and uh, I approve of it. I'm a laborer from 223 and um, I think it's going to pr provide good jobs, clean up the, uh, the site, which would be very costly without this project going on. And uh, I approve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stephen Benelli, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you for um, for uh, taking my comments. Um, my name is Stephen Benelli. Uh, I'm a property owner in um, South Boston. Um, I, I, I speak overwhelmingly in support of this project. Um, I think it's uh, very well thought through. Um, it takes into consideration the history of the site. Um, I think it's 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 really long overdue. Um, you know, as as has been alluded to, you know, the this site has been walled off for a number of years, and it's got two atrocious pink towers. Um, and I, I think removing these is is a uh, is a huge benefit to the neighborhood. Um, in addition, having access to the waterfront is why a lot of people move to South Boston and um, utilizing those natural resources that um, that the neighborhood has is is extremely important. And so um, I think the development team has done a great job in designing around that. Um, <clears throat> I also just want to speak to the public transit issue. Um, the, the parking and the transit issue in South Boston has been an issue for a number of years and this addresses those issues. Uh, or at least helps alleviate them, and um, and I think is uh, a, a really good move um, forward for the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Justin Desmond. You can unmute yourself. Hi, thank you, Justin Desmond. I work for District Council Thirty Five: Painters, Drywall Finishers, and Glass and Glazers. Uh, we thank the board for uh, uh, giving us the opportunity to speak. On, the, on this project, also the development team. Uh, it's gonna be really good to have a environmental cleanup, uh, neighborhood benefits, and also the uh, apprenticeship programs coming into this project. And we are in full uh, support of the project. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Justin. Dan Gollinger, you can unmute yourself. Hi, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Dan. I currently live on K Street and I'm a big proponent of this project. I think it's gonna be a great value add for the community as a whole um, for a lot of the reasons uh, many of the people have uh, mentioned, but the restoration of the turbine halls, the addition of public spaces, and I think the connection of Southie to the seaport are really gonna be great additions to the neighborhood. So fully in support, thank you. Thank you. Virginia Kropus, I hope I pronounced that close. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, thank you, Madam Chairman um, and the board. Um, I am uh, here to speak in favor of this project. I've always admired what they've tried to do as far as um, keeping the historical aspects of um, and the wonderful machinery, et cetera, of, of the turbine buildings um, intact to the extent that they can and utilizing that as something to excite people as, as far as our um, industrial history. And also the fact that they, from the very beginning, were very concerned about how the land that touches the water should become an area of green and um, diversity of plants that might actually um, invite birds and bees and everything else into the area. Um, 
and I am so happy that there is go are going to be so many trees and so much green space, whether it's passively used or more actively used, like the playground at the, what is that, at the, the north end, the north side. Um, I really appreciate it. And the access that we will have through M Street down to the water and N Street. So that's all I have to say. Congratulations. I hope the best for Hillcoat and, and um, oh, shoot. <laughs> Red. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all I have to say. I support this, this project. Thank you. Dan Magoon, you can unmute yourself. Uh, good evening. My name is Dan McGoon. I'm the executive director of Massachusetts Fallen Heroes. Uh, grew up in South Boston and uh, located right across the reserve channel, uh, our home office. Uh, we are 100% in support of this great project and commend uh, Redgate and Hillco for stepping up to support veterans. Uh, obviously, this is a long-term play uh, and the vision to support you know veterans in South Boston, but also in Boston. Uh, with access to unbelievable union jobs and more importantly housing so uh, from our organization our board uh, we support this this great initiative thank you thank you pat walsh you can unmute yourself hi yes good evening uh, madam chairwoman and the rest of the board members my name is pat walsh i'm the president of labor's local 223 and uh, i rise tonight in support of this project and the men and women of the labor's union are committed if this project is approved to uh, clean up the site and all the environmental remediation to the highest standards. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce Berman, you can unmute yourself. Thank you, Madam. Uh, I, I want to thank um, the project. I'm here in enthusiastic support of this project. I want to thank the uh, proponents uh, and, and the elected officials uh, Representative Collins, Senator Collins, and uh, and, and of course uh, uh, Congressman Lynch, and and, and Councillor Flaherty, and and uh, and and Councillor Flynn, and, and and Rep. Beal, and the community and our neighbors, um, for working so hard to find a way to take um, uh, what had a site with enormous potential but a really big downside and constructively reuse it. Um, our offices are on the Fish Pier. Uh, we run programs in partnership with um, many of the organizations in South Boston to serve our kids in our community. Um, we think that this site um, will, will, will be a, a destination. Um, and an asset. Um, I, I did not grow up in South Boston, but I did catch my first striped bass um, on Boston Harbor on the site. I look forward uh, to catching a striped bass there um, with all of you as soon as it's completed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Bernie Alcock. You can unmute yourself. Bernie? Bernie, if you're having difficulties uh, using Zoom, you can call 617-918-4236. Joanna Flynn, can you unmute yourself, please? Hello, thank you. Hi. Uh, Madam Chair Rojas and members of the board, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Joanna Humphrey Flynn. I am a resident and owner here in South Boston, just off of L Street near the plant. Um, and I'm here with my husband, my five-year-old son, and my one-and-a-half-year-old, who are all um, voicing our 100% support for this project. When we moved to this neighborhood, we had heard whispers of this project and were excited at the opportunity. It brought not just from giving a much beloved eyesore a necessary makeover, but the outdoor space and access to the waterfront we anticipated using regularly as a family. As others have mentioned, L Street is a main street that many, including myself, used to get to and from work. And it would be a huge benefit to the safety of our community and not only the experience walking through our own neighborhood um, to be able to connect the two areas, the Seaport and the South Boston through this project. Um, I am even more impressed by the work the team has done to um, create packages and programs that invest back into the community. This is a project that I know would just make such a huge impact on everyone from you know retail to children to neighbors to people coming in and out of this area. Um, you know, it's thank you. We are here with our full support is what I'm here to say, I guess. <laughs> Thanks all for your work on this project. Um, and I look forward to 
seeing how it develops. Thank you, Joanna. Thanks, Joanna. I think you were able to um, unmute yourself earlier. Is there anybody else who has any comments? Go ahead and raise your virtual hand. Okay, Madam Chair, I think that concludes public comment. Okay, great. Um, if we, do we have any, oh, Bernie? Where's, is that Bernie? Oh, sorry, I thought, I thought we got him. <laughs> I saw something move, but I think his, his mic went off. Um, so uh, do we have any um, letters or uh, emails to be read into the, um, into the record? Yes, Madam Chair. So I'll, uh, I can proceed? Please, please. <laughs> um, the first one that I will read is from Boston City Councilor Ed Flynn. He's a District 2 Councilor for the area. Um, dear members of the BPDA board, I'm writing to share the concerns of my neighbors with the proposed redevelopment project at 776 Summer Street. The site of the former South Boston Edison power plant, residents continue to call attention to increased traffic and congestion, pedestrian safety, environmental concerns to height and density of the project and concerns regarding community benefits for the neighborhood of South Boston. The project has gone through multiple iterations with proposed mixed use development consisting of office and research and development space, 204 keyed hotel rooms, retail space, 636 residential units, civic and cultural space, and 1,214 parking spaces. In the last six months, there has been compromises from the development team, such as additional affordability and workforce income restricted housing, discounted rent for small businesses, grants for Medal of Honor Park, an on-site child care facility, neighborhood parking commitments, and pedestrian safety improvements to eight intersections prioritized by the South Boston community. There has been commitments to annual scholarships funding for South Boston high schools and college students in perpetuity uh, apprenticeships and internships for residents and veteran organizations, as well as the building pathways pre-apprenticeship program, in addition to remediation to federal and state standards at the request of fellow South Boston elected officials. And I, the, propose, the proposal would fund a licensed site professional representing the South Boston community to review proposal envi proposals, environmental remediation plans. But concerns also remain for my neighbors and I about the height of the project and the residential character of the surrounding City Point neighborhood. Residents have naturally expressed concerns about speeding vehicles due to the additional traffic, congestion, and pedestrian safety challenges that this project will undoubtedly bring to the neighborhood in the form of more vehicle trips and ride sharing to the area. Residents have relied seriously have relayed serious environmental and health concerns during the construction phase and wish to see additional protection measures for exposure to harmful toxins due to wind and the elements uh, potentially carrying them into the neighborhood. My constituents continue to also advocate for linkage benefits remaining in South Boston community for our public housing development, job training for South Boston residents, and affordable rental for small businesses who have been severely impacted in the COVID-19 pandemic. I represent a diverse community in South Boston, including at several Boston Housing Authority locations that would benefit greatly from linkage funds from this project, pathways to opportunities for them and their families. I hope that the BPDA board will seriously take this concern into consideration. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, ed.flynn at boston.gov or at 617-635-3203. And that is from, again, Councilor, District Councilor Ed Flynn. Also um, have a letter from um, Rhett Beal. 
Rep. Bill has also provided a substantial com uh, comment letter. In it, he details the process for his uh, perceived pr perspective as a former IAG member and current elected official, as well as a number of important issues discussed throughout. He looks forward to continuing the work with the South Boston community, the BPDA, and other city agencies, and the development team to ensure that the project is a positive and inclusive addition to the neighborhood. And again, that was from Rhett Beal. Um, he represents the area there in South Boston and parts of Dorchester. Um, I also have a letter from the ship, the Boston Shipping Association, Inc. Um, dear Board of Directors, the Boston Shipping Association respectfully submits this letter testimony concerning the proposed um, 776 Summer Street, South Boston, Boston Edison Development Project. By way of background, the BSA is a nonprofit business association whose membership is comprised of steamship lines, ship agents, Steve DeRose, terminal operators, and service organizations who directly employ and directly interact with the with International Longshoremen Association Labor. The BSA mission of overseeing investment in pension and health and welfare and negotiating and administrating labor agreements on behalf of our employers members have broadened over the years. The BSA has become more focused on advocating for the protection and growth of traditional maritime industries in the port of Boston, thereby fostering economic prosperity for the port, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the New England region. Pursuant to its commitment to advocate on behalf of the working port, the BSA submits this written testimony to express in general support for the proposal 776 Summer Street, South Boston, Boston Edison development project. After having been support, I'm sorry, um, development project for having been assured by the Redgate and Helco development team that the BSA issues raised at the December 20th, 2020 and January 6, 2021, um, Boston Planning and Development Agency public comments sessions have been are well be reviewed and resolved. Together, the ILA and the BSA Maritime employers have worked hard to make the Port of Boston, in particular, Continental Terminally, an even more attractive business designation for those involved in cargo shipping. Port Association, shipping lines, and other maritime businesses have taken notice of the tremendous pro um, productivity improvements by the hardworking men, women. Does that mean I stop? Yes. It's a long, sorry, it we was a long one. For two minutes, just, just as if they were giving public comment at the meeting. Okay. Um, the next um, comment that I have is was from Elaine Smith. She is an IAG member. She said, please treat this letter as my opposition to the 776 um, Edison redevelopment project being presented before the ZBA board, January 14, 2020. I have been involved with the redevelopment projects both on IAG members and the community residents since the first discussion and meetings began. I believe more discussion is necessary regarding some of the zoning changes being requested, specifically um, what remains paramount to me and others is the, summer, is the Summer Street Development's proposal regarding the height and density of the proposed project. The height of some buildings are close to 20 stories high Approval of that zoning request relief is unreasonable and would set standards for future zoning projects in our neighborhood. These proposed heights mimic the seaport, which most agree do not fit into the remaining residential area of City Point. Homes that hold unique historical value, architecture, architecture and character remain the jewel of City Point. If the deed restriction is waived, I have another neighborhood concern. There, is, there are not enough entrances and exits being proposed. This will result in additional traffic, noise, and pollution to surrounding areas of the neighborhood. Environmental concerns are extremely important. The service road behind building A and F should also act as an entry and exit for all residents and employees needing access. Traffic and transportation remains troubling. Initially, the proposal discussed adding additional buses to the seven and nine 
roots. At the last public meeting on January 5th, 2020, we were informed that because of the current status of COVID, some of these added services would be diverted to other transit areas currently in need. All benefits should stay in the neighborhood. Previously, there was a discussion of adding a number of seven buses to the Sunday bus schedule, currently non-existent, and this benefit has been eliminated. This is a benefit that needs to readdress the traffic commitments remain extremely problematic. One must, okay. So the next um, comment is Phil Trotter. Um, please ex accept this as my support of the project at 776 Summer Street. I am a direct abutter and have watched this project progress over the last few years. I have attended the meetings and have carefully listened to the concerns of the neighbor of residents of South Boston and watched the developer entertaining successfully address those concerns. The project will transform a dinosaur from Boston's past into a viable source of tax, traf, uh, tax revenue, my apologies, jobs and useful open space. The community benefits over time will also enhance the life of Southie residents by providing solutions and funding for public transportation, housing, and better traffic management. I urge you to grant approval for this project. Okay, um, next one is from uh, Dora Clark. I'm in favor of the project approval. I have attended most of the community hearings. I believe that the park space, the climate resiliency planning, cleanup of the environmental hazards, and perceiving historical and preserving historical buildings. I hope that project is I hope that project is approved and will move forward. Um, this is from Patricia Dunn. Um, I am writing in opposition to the Edison project as it exists. This project is much too big for this South Boston neighborhood. I feel we are being jammed in here. Traffic congestion is already a bear. This project would further exacerbate our problems. Okay, and um, I have another one. It's, um, hello, as a director better, six, um, I'm not gonna say their address, but they live in South Boston. We are asking you to please proceed with the project. The current building is an eyesore. The new structure will bring wonderful opportunities to the community. It will support the area in so many ways. This project has become embarrassing in terms of length of time this has taken. Please do this right thing and take politics out of this of the decision and move forward. I'm tr in trying times like these people need something to look forward. We look forward to the future part of our decision to move to South Boston was because of this project. Please move forward. Thank you. And then um, Mr. Harvey, I write to you today to register my opposition to the above name project that is before your department. As a long, lifelong resident of South Boston and as a resident within the shadow of the old Edison smokestacks, the project as proposed fails to attain the level of appropriateness our vision for such an iconic location. The density is daunting. The community, um, the project, I, I don't know what that word is. The project will for decades to come be a source of um, contention to those of us who have suffered mightily for oh so many years for the scares created by the belching behemoth on L Street. On balance, almost ev everything would be better than an operational plant on the site. However, the reality of the plant and its envision being occupied by yet another industrial eyesore is hopelessness, hopeless, hopelessly unrealistic and just is not going to happen in any of, the li in any of our lifetime. We could have done much better. We possess the talent, we have skills, time is in our hands and technology appropriately employed will assist with the execution of more imaginative, imaginative master plan. Stephen, who wrote that letter? We just um, need Richard Hayes. Okay. Okay, and that was it. Hey, thank you, Mr. Harvey. Take a glass of water. <laughs> that was a, <laughs> feel free of the in the future to, to, to tag team so we can we can help you out there. But um, great, thank you. 
Um, so uh, that concludes our uh, public testimony, both written and, um, and verbal. Uh, now we will open it up to the board. Do you have any questions or comments? Board members. Um, well, I, I have uh, a, a quick comment. Um, and then I'll defer to my uh, colleagues from Southie. Um, more, more than 30 years ago, um, I lived uh, illegally with uh, about 900 artists uh, in the Fort Point Channel in one of the old Balsam Wharf Company buildings. Um, and uh, so I, I know this parcel well because we used to walk down there and people would sketch and take photographs and uh, it was an eyesore then, and it's, it uh, was uh, polluting, um, and it was a major employer, but it was also uh, a major health hazard for many of the people who worked there. Um, and, and I look at the uh, team that has come together, which is really a very um, excellent team in terms of its expertise and the work that they've done uh, to um, uh, be responsive uh, to a number of uh, community concerns that have been raised uh, over the years. Um, and, and I have to commend the team for um, what it has put together and the way in which it has responded uh, to uh, community concerns by addressing issues of uh, transportation and uh, waterfront access um, and providing uh, affordable housing for uh, families in the area and um, setting aside funds for employment and training. Um, I, I think that there's been a great dialogue uh, that has gone on around this project and and I want to commend the, uh, the development team in that regard. And then I would also make one other comment about that. When we met a month ago, uh, we did not know that Mayor Walsh was on his way uh, potentially to Washington. And um, when we hold our next meeting a month from now, he may well already be there. Things have a way of changing really fast. But one of the things that I think this project demonstrates uh, very conclusively um, is that when um, a community um, has discourse that involves the developer um, and this agency, um, that there are very positive uh, results that can uh, result, um, uh, both uh, in, in the short term, um, in terms of the development team and the work it does, and in the lo very long term, in terms of uh, benefits that uh, accrue to uh, both the community and the wider city. And it would be my hope um, that this project and a couple of others that we uh, looked at tonight, including the uh, very small project in Mattapan and the project in, in uh, Brighton, um, would become case studies uh, really for the rest of the city as to how to work with uh, a public agency um, and with the development team to bring about benefits uh, that accrue to the wider city. And then the very last thing I'll say um, is that one of the things we've learned from some of our developments, um, like uh, the work that um, uh, took place uh, at the Lawn on D, um, is that uh, none of our communities are really I uh, islands and that um, we really are a diverse city. And as Councillor Flynn pointed out, uh, there's a lot of diversity uh, in Southie. And um, one would hope that the ongoing dialogue would make this particular site uh, the kind of destination that would further prove um, the um, uh, diverse nature uh, of the city and the need for everyone to have access to the waterfront. So uh, I, for one, think that this is a, a terrific solution to um, a, a longstanding a uh, set of problems caused by uh, this this uh, formerly polluting eyesore, um, and and uh, it, it's easy for me to support this one. Great, um, I've got uh, quite a bit to say, which is unusual for me. And Dr. Landsmark, I appreciate the segue because 
I saw the original proposal for this, which was four or five years ago. Like a lot of my neighbors, I was just shocked and couldn't see that uh, type of project fit down there. But I commend our elected officials and my friends and neighbors in this community. And I've never lived more than 10 blocks. I've moved several times, but I've never been 10 blocks from that site. So I know it well. But the process that we've gone through, I think, makes this a much better project. And certainly it's complicated when we've got the Conley Terminal and the waterfront and environmental issues and, and a tight neighborhood that's already dealt with a, a tremendous amount of construction. But I think the path we're on in this most recent rendition, had we had this call two years ago, the tone of my neighbors on the phone, uh, the call-ins would have been a whole lot different. But I think the concessions that were made and our elected officials and, and the members of the community holding the developers' feet to the fire and expecting great things to happen, we're well on the road there. And on a personal note, uh, the Medal of Honor Park, which stands right over this development, the tot lot there was named um, after my wife, Laurie. We spent a lot of time up there with our children. I love to go by and see the, the young kids playing up there with their families. And for them to look down on a site like this uh, is, that's existing now with the environmental issues is, is just, uh, it's so, it will be so much better. We're certainly not there yet, but I love what we're seeing and, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm proud to be supportive here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Um, any additional questions or comments from the board? I have a comment, one question, Madam Chair. Brian, well said. Uh, Council Flaherty left out the coal soot that would end up on the sheets and clothes on the, on the, uh, as they were drying on the, uh, on the yard. But, um, so the development team, I think, did a tr tremendous job here. I mean, they were really in a tough spot from those that wanted all the benefits, clean it all up, uh, but don't build anything, which isn't practical, um, to more affordables, less affordables. And they, they did a tough job. As the elected officials also, they were, I mean, they were getting it from every angle. And to have it come out at the end when the majority of people are in favor, I think it's a commendable commute to the, to the process, Brian, right? So it was, um, it was good. I know everyone probably wanted it about two years shorter, but um, it all worked out in the end. And uh, sometimes a delay can benefit a development missing a cycle, but also getting on the other side of the beginning of the cycle. My question was on one of the line items I saw it was about thirteen million. It was thirteen million one hundred forty thousand dollars for resident parking, <clears throat> and I couldn't figure out what what that was. So I don't need a long answer. It's been a long presentation. We got more business to do, but I was just curious what that what that was. Where was that? What's that money do? Thirteen it was thirteen million one hundred forty thousand. It said resident parking. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer that, Councillor Moynihan. Um, so we basically took the value of that uh, at an hourly rate for nights and weekends and during snow emergencies and uh, added that all up across 120 spaces on an annual basis and capitalized it. It's the value to the project. It's the cost well, of the project. Is it first come, first serve for the neighborhood? Or what was the... Yeah, I think the detail, the specifics of how it's going to work will have to still be worked out. We know that it'll be available to residents that have South Boston parking stickers, obviously. Mm -hmm. That would be most likely on a first come, first serve basis. But Great. hopefully that can alleviate some of the parking stress in the in the neighborhood. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, any additional questions or comments? Okay. Um, just a quick uh Quick comment, um, you know, again, echo a lot of what my, my fellow board members have um, have said. Um, I I know that there are, you know, there there is, you know, some opposition, um, but but it is it is tough to please uh, to please everyone. However, I do think that um, you know. Um, Ways to address some of that. I think there there are still opportunities to do so um, over time as this project continues to uh, continues to evolve. I'm particularly um, excited about um, the opportunity and the open uh, the access to uh, to Boston's Great Waterfront 
um, being being from Chicago, not having access to waterfront sometimes is, is a little strange to me. Um, so I do like that that this is um, this is making Boston and our and our fabulous like asset and um, and to 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 nature um, accessible. Um, not only to South Boston community, but to to all city residents and people who come and visit. And, you know, it looks like that, um, you know, this project is definitely going to be a, you know, a destination. Um, one of the uh, one of the images and renderings that I got really excited about um, was this um, older individual playing uh, chess uh, and then the um, the different uh, sea um, absorbing plants and, and greenery around around there, and uh, you know, one of our one of the comments um, by some of the opposition was uh, you know, concern for some of our, our more vulnerable residents, particularly our elderly uh, population within the South Boston, where there are um, you know quite a few seniors um, aging in their current homes, but also in uh, and residential senior communities. Um, and I, I would love to kind of see some of that activity, you know, come to fruition, whether it's playing chess or doing whatever, um, but, uh, but thinking about the programming for, you know, not only our two-year-olds, which I think we had about like five two-year-olds <laughs> on the call, um, but, but kind of how, how does the, you know, the entire um, span of, of a person's life, right? How do they experience that? Um, just fabulous, fabulous uh, gift and resource um, that is very precious uh, to you know to the city and its residents. So um, I think uh, that more, again, more just a comment, um, and and I think there's really great opportunity here. More process still to uh, still to come as we um, you know work over um, the phases of this development. But um, well done. So. With that, uh, a motion is in order. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call for a vote. Ms. Downs? Aye. Mr. Monahan? Aye. Dr. Landsberg? Aye. Mr. Miller? Mr. Miller, you're on mute. <laughs> you're still on mute, okay. Sorry about that, aye. Okay. And the chair votes aye. Motion passes. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Thank, Thank you, members so of the board chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay healthy, everyone. Yes, you too. Okay, um, Secretary Paul Hemas, give me a uh, out here. We are at number twenty. We are at number twenty. Correct. Okay. Let's break. take a break after number 20. Okay, let's do number 20 and then take a break. Got it. Okay. Um, item number 20, request authorization to issue a certification of approval pursuant to Article 80E, Small Project Review of the Zoning Code, for the construction of 38 units of affordable senior housing and an 800 square feet restaurant space dedicated to El Embajador restaurant located at 3371 Washington Street to recommend approval uh, to the Board of Appeal for zoning relief and to take all related actions. Dana. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Secretary Pulhemus and Director Golden. This is Dana Whiteside, Deputy Director for Economic Development. Uh, as I begin my, rem my remarks, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, please. We're very pleased to provide an overview of the proposed 3371 Washington Street development in Jamaica Plain. As you can see from this first slide, there's an overview of the various programmatic aspects, which I will defer to the development team to provide details on, but I'll say a few things about context. Uh, this project exists within the parameters of the Plan JP Rocks guidelines, which were adopted by the BPD board in March of 2017, and include such goals as increased affordable housing, transit-oriented development, sustainability and design, job creation and business preservation. This project will result in a number of beneficial components, including the creation of an all income restricted housing for seniors, as well as high levels of envir environmental sustainability with LEED Gold certification and the preservation of space for a long standing neighborhood business, El Embajador. 
I'll offer a few remarks about the regulatory review and then we'll turn the presentation over to the development team to briefly review aspects of the project program and then we will return to assist with any questions you might have. The project team of Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corporation and New Atlantic submitted an application for review under Article 80 on September 23rd, 2020. Following initial comment period extension, the comment period was further extended to December 28th to allow for additional commentary and feedback from area stakeholders, as well as to accommodate for schedule of review with the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council. The BPDA hosted a virtual public meeting on December 8th of 2020. This project will utilize funding from both the, the Department of Neighborhood Development and the Department of Housing and Community Development to support its deep levels of affordability and uh, further note that that affordability will last in perpetuity. Levels of support for the project have been provided by elected officials associated with the district, including Councillor O'Malley and Representative Malia. In rounding out my comments on the recommendation for approval of this proposed development, I would note that staff are in agreement that design guidelines and principles have been applied in very good order here. And I will also acknowledge though that there are opportunities to further enhance those aspects. And this will be completed during the post article 80 design review process for working with abutters and neighbors to further enhance those considerations. I will now turn the presentation over to Toronto Ellis. Chief Executive Officer of Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corporation, who will advance the presentation, and we will take any questions you might have after, afterwards. Good evening, and thank you, Dana. Hi, everyone. My name is Taronda Ellis. I'm the uh, newly appointed CEO of JPNDC. Very happy to be here with you this evening. Um, I just want to welcome my, the members of my team, uh, we are working on this site in partnership with New Atlantic Development, as Dana mentioned. Um, I am going to keep my comments brief as we are uh, deep into the evening. So, Madam Chair, thank you uh, for having us this evening. And for the members of the board, it is nice to see many of you. And I'm very sorry that we are not seeing folks in person. But in the spirit of keeping everyone safe, um, we appreciate the opportunity to be here with you this evening. Um, I just want to share uh, a little bit about the context around the site. Uh, this is a, uh, as Dana said, a, you know, completely and deeply affordable uh, housing project that we're very, very excited to introduce um, for something that we haven't been able to do at the JPNDC for a long time, which is uh, to develop senior housing. Um, many of us are getting a little grayer and uh, we really do appreciate the opportunity to um, add this site to our uh, portfolio of senior housing. Um, we have at the JPNDC enjoyed a long robust history of providing uh, some flagship senior housing and very excited that some of that senior housing uh, has been recently uh, awarded dates for, for COVID uh, testing and um, vaccine. So without further ado, uh, this is a project that we're very excited about um, and it has been uh, quite a little uh, history around the neighborhood support uh, for our acquisition of the site. This site, um, really had a grassroots movement behind it um, by many of the stakeholders and groups, community groups that I do hope are on the call this evening. Um, so we would just want to acknowledge their support along the acquisition of this site from a previous market rate developer, uh, primarily for two goals. And we're excited to be here to uh, represent the community's goals. The first was really to stave the di displacement that was taking place, um, active displacement of two longstanding commercial small businesses at the site. And the second was to really secure an opportunity in the plan JP Rocks neighborhood for additional affordability. And so we are here today to present this 39 one bedroom senior housing development that is going to do exactly that. Uh, so we have completely affordable project. Many of our um, our residents have, have really come to enjoy the, the robust service that we provide in our senior housing. And so we will be talking tonight about things like common area amenities and shared space for building community among seniors. Um, 
the affordability, as we are noting here, is about 30% units at or below 30% of AMI. The remaining uh, units will be at or below 60% AMI. And as we move forward, if there are additional opportunities to uh, deepen the affordability, we will certainly keep that and preserve that option. We will maintain the restaurant space. Uh, currently, El Embajador, uh, many of us have, uh, who enjoy a nice cultural meal uh, have shared in some of the rice and beans and other dishes there. And so we're really excited to have that tenancy be preserved and to have opportunities to work with the owners to move that project forward with them in mind in the future. Next slide, please. I'm going to turn the microphone over at this time to our esteemed consultant and architect, Ingrid Bankston, uh, to take us through the JP Rocks corridor and more detail on the site. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Taranda, and um, thank you everyone for having us this evening. Um, so this is an aerial view of the site from the south, uh, showing the site near the intersection of Washington and Green Street in Jamaica Plain. Um, as you can see, it's a really good location, just a few minutes walk from the Green Street T-stop and Southwest Corridor. Uh, next slide. Rotating almost 80, one, 180 degrees, this is uh, the building showing the approved and proposed projects in the immediate vicinity. There is a lot of development right in this uh, immediate area. Um, and just to note that it's not showing the recently uh, proposed BMS paper project at 3390 Washington Street. Next. Um, we've included this section diagram to show a very brief snapshot of the evolution of the building thus far. Um, when the team purchased the property, the intention was to build 45 units at six stories. Um, throughout the initial process, we've been in communication with the Butters, uh, JPNC, and the BPDA. And responding to their feedback, we've adjusted the massing to five stories and integrated further step backs at the ground and levels four and five. Um, since parking was removed from the project, we have been able to reduce the overall size significantly, but only use, uh, lose six units. Next. So it's a very narrow Ingrid, site. Yes. As you go to the next slide, I just want to acknowledge that you're, we're running a little bit low on time, so we want to, we want to move this along. Sure. Uh, okay. I'll speed through this then. Um, on the ground level, we are um, showing some designated parking uh, and drop off um, at the front of the building. We've stepped back the ground floor um, sort of to um, uh, comply with complete, complete streets recommended sidewalk zone width. Um, and the building overhang provides a nice protected outdoor waiting area. Um, resident services are located just past the elevator lobby, and there's a large community room near the back flanked by two outdoor spaces, a protected private courtyard and a planted patio space in the rear. There'll be a nice place for residents to sit um, and also provide a vegetated buffer from the homes on Union Ave. Um, Live-in manager unit is right next to the community room and um, uh, there is bike parking for the more active residents and staff. Next. Um, just a few uh, views of the building in context, uh, showing proposed buildings in light pink next, or approved in this case. That's the massing behind 3371 next. Um, from the other direction on Washington Street next. Art uh, on Union Ave. You can see the building uh, peeking through next. Um, so this is sort of a view of the building uh, showing the materiality. Um, you know, we're thinking it's going to be sort of a light, warm tone brick. Um, the massing peels back at the corner um, to sort of step down from the higher building proposed at the, or approved at the corner of Washington and Green. Um, we're incorporating angled brick at the setbacks and uh, projecting window surrounds to sort of add texture and depth uh, to the facade and bring a little bit of playfulness to this very durable and timeless material. Right now, that sort of blank wall on the zero lot line is showing a green wall, um, but we're in conversations with abutters about this design and we're studying various options for brick coursing and public art um, to really make sure that this facade is a neighborhood asset. Next. 
And you know, while the building adheres to the uh, 20 foot rear yard setback, we do know that its presence still impacts the triple deckers on Union Ave. So we're very conscious of not letting the quote unquote back of the building be an afterthought. Um, we're treating the rear facade with the same details and care as the front of the building. And we're in ongoing conversations with the abutters about this design. Um, and similarly, we know that the adjacency with the business turtle swamp is very important. Um, we've been in contact with them and are developing the barrier between sort of their business and the courtyard um, to make sure that we promote sort of good neighborly relations uh, long into the future. Next. And finally, but certainly not least, um, sustainability is really of the utmost importance. And this uh, project has very high sustainability objectives. Um, it will be LEED Gold uh, certified, and we will be working also on Passive House certification. Um, it will be all electric um, per the new DND guidelines. Um, but I think more importantly, it's going to have a tight envelope, be very uh, energy efficient with really good indoor air quality that's gonna be really important for the quality of life for the senior residents. Um, and I know that there is um, some questions about all electric uh, earlier in the evening and um, the building owners are planning to pay um, the utilities and not the residents. Um, and there is an opportunity for, I think a 36 kilowatt photovoltaic array on the roof. Um, and I think that's basically the conclusion of our presentation. Thank you very much, uh, development team. And uh, I would just note, Madam Chair, that we are here to take any questions you all, you all may have. Uh, great, thank you. Thank you for that presentation um, and some of those uh, proactive questions uh, that you answered. <laughs> so um, do we have any other questions from the board? Uh, just a comment that uh, precisely because there is so much development going on in the neighborhood, we are getting uh, calls, uh, needless to say, from neighbors who are not exclusively abutters, but who uh, live in the neighborhood. And um, I would just strongly encourage you to uh, continue to work closely uh, with uh, some of the uh, longer term residents in the neighborhood um, who um, want to work with you. Carol, uh, Ms. Downs. Um, I would just like to say a few years ago, Ellen Bajador was facing displacement and the end of their business. Uh, this is a couple that's been running that business for several decades. And it's really wonderful to see now their business being saved and affordable senior housing being created. Uh, it's just really fantastic. Any additional comments, questions? All right, hearing and seeing none, motion is in order. So moved. Second. Okay, roll call for a vote. Ms. Downs? Aye. Uh, Mr. Monahan? Aye. Dr. Landsmark? Aye. Mr. Miller? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion passes. Congratulations and best of luck. Thanks very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so we are um, at our next break. Um, so if we want to, Secretary Paul Hemes, do we, what do we say, like 745? How? Okay. okay, 745. Okay, let's say 745. Um, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll resume. We have about five more projects, a couple more other agenda items, but. Um, Taking a break. All right. See you soon.